Hey, welcome to Rob Paints Models. Today we're going to be painting a Bad Moon Orc, because it's October. So this paint scheme is actually kind of optimized a little bit for speed. I think the to model took a total of two hours, but you could cut that down a little bit by skipping some of the steps, and I'll point those out along the way. I'm going to start off by doing as much as I can with an airbrush to begin with, because it's just faster and scales well with large numbers of models. I'm going to be doing this in sub-assembly, so I've actually got every single bit of the boy separate here, which just makes it a bit easier to paint. Start off by painting all of the skin with warg flesh. Now we're going to do a zenithal highlight with Strachan Green, so make sure you're holding your bits in the orientation where you want them to be positioned so that the light is going to be hitting them from above. Next we're going to be doing another zenithal highlight with Ogryn Camo, focusing towards the areas of interest, so the top of the brow, the face and the jawline there, and just on top of the shoulders. Now I'm going to be using some Cadian Flesh Tone, now this is thinned down a lot. Um, I'm shooting at about 15 psi here with my airbrush, and I'm just using this to highlight the elbows and the knuckles and around the mouth on the orc there just to make it look like the blood vessels are kind of closer to the surface of the skin because now we know orcs have red blood it's canon it's not green anymore So now I've masked off the neck on the torso there, and I'm going to respray the torso black. And then I'm going to go through with some VMA dark grey blue and create a zenithal highlight on the torso, just making sure the shirt gets all of its shape, and onto the boots as well. Now I'm going to use some Doom Bull Brown, and I'm going to paint this on as a zenithal highlight over the black on the pants. I'm just going to leave black in the very underside. And I'm going to use Terminator Stone, and this is thinned down a fair bit and shooting at low PSI, just to create a little highlight on the pants there. If it oversprays onto the boots as well, that doesn't matter. So once everything has been left to dry, and you should let it dry for a couple of hours, we're going to be doing some washes. So starting off with the Thonian camo shade all over the skin areas. Make sure it doesn't pull too much on the topmost surfaces. You can use a clean brush to pull that away. You don't want to flood it too much with this stuff. Now we're going to use Agrax Earthshade all over the pants. And then Null Oil on the shirt and boots. So now we're going to move on to the face and skin. I'm going to start by painting the lower lip of the orc with Screamer Pink. The more careful you are at this stage, the better. 
I was actually painting with a, my new head magnifier on and this made this much, much easier to do without needing to do any touch-ups. There'll be a video in the top corner that you can go and watch for my review of that. Now I'm going to do some edge highlights with Ogren Camo. I don't need to do many of these and most of them were only on the face. My advice is to spend, you know, 20 to 30 minutes painting the face and then the rest of the time painting the rest of the orc because the face is the focal point of the miniature. It's the thing people are going to notice first. So you want to make sure the face is well painted and then they probably won't notice that the rest of the model has kind of a half-assed paint job on it. So now this is a 50-50 mix of Ogryn Camo and Screamer Pink that I'm just using to do little dots on the lower lip there. Just makes it look a bit more textured. Now I'm using some Evil Sun Scarlet and I'm painting in his eyes. I'm also going to paint the scar that's running down on his face here with this to make it look like it's a bit more fresh. I'm also going to mix in myself a little lighter tone by mixing some Ogryn Camo with my Evil Sun Scarlet and just dot the eye there so it's a little bit brighter in the middle. It's very important to have a very fine point on your brush for these steps. It really improves the precision and reduces the amount of going back and touching up things that you have to do. Once I'd painted that scar and I also went back in with some Ogryn Camo and just highlighted the sides of it as well to make them stand out. Now I'm going to base coat all of the teeth with Rhinox Hide. Try not to get this on the lips. I also went through any other teeth that were on the model and base coated them at this point, as well as did the earrings that are on this model and base coated them with Rhinox Hide too. Now I'm going to paint all those teeth with Bane Blade Brown. You want to try and leave the Rhinox Hide between the teeth, so it pays to spend a little bit of time just doing this quite carefully. Let the raised texture of the teeth kind of guide where your brush is going to go, just use the side of your brush more than the tip here. And you should be able to just pick the teeth out quite nicely in the mouth. This was probably the most time consuming part of painting the face actually. Now I'm going to use some pallid witch flesh and I'm just going to use that to highlight the sharpest points of the teeth. Once that's done, I'm going to go in some Agrax Earthshade and I'm just going to run it over the teeth so that it uh, kind of blends those colours together and creates a little bit of depth in the areas where you might have missed. Now I'm going to paint the earrings with Liberator Gold. This takes about two thin coats to cover nicely over the uh, Rhinox Hide. Again, just be careful. Use a fine pointed brush and it makes it much easier. And then once that Liberator Gold's done, I went and unified all of the earrings and the teeth on the ear with some Agrax Earth Shade. Now we're going to be painting all of the black areas. Start off by base coating everything you want to be black with a bad and black. Do this in several thin coats so that you get a nice smooth finish. Now I'm going to use some VMA Dark Grey Blue and I'm just going to kind of rough in some highlights on the gloves and the slugger here. Making sure to get it in the areas that would be uh, lit by our sunlight source from above. I'm also going to go back and forth between my VMA Dark Grey Blue and my Bad and Black. 
just kind of smoothing out those blends. You don't have to smooth out the blends here. Indeed, if you want to just paint all of the gloves and the slugger with VMA dark grey blue, that would work and it would save you a fair bit of time. Now I'm going to use Administratum Grey and I'm going to edge highlight all of those black areas. This works well on the gloves because I imagine the gloves to be a relatively shiny leather type material. So having a sharp edge highlight on that leather will actually make it look more shiny. I'm also going to go around the shirt and I'm going to edge highlight the um, hems of the sleeves. Not that they have sleeves. It's like a tank top, isn't it? Anyway, I'm going to edge highlight the shirt and then I'm going to go around and I'm going to create a kind of textured pattern on there as well. So you can see I'm using some thinned down administratum grey and I'm just drawing little lines starting from inside and pulling towards the outside of the model there. And just creating lots of little lines of lots of different lengths and different intensities to build up a kind of frayed looking texture. Again, having a very fine point in your brush makes this much easier and it's actually a relatively quick process this. If you wanted to, you could skip this to get them on the tabletop faster. I'm also going to go through and do an edge highlight with my administratum grey on the boots as well, just like the leather gloves because they're going to be shiny black leather, having a sharp highlight actually works quite well. Now the next step we're going to be base coating everything that we want to be metal with Rhinox hide. I'm also going to base coat all of the belts at this point because they're going to use the same base colour. Note that if you want your metal areas to just be a shiny metal, you don't need to do this on them. You only need to do this for areas that you want to be a kind of rusty metal. You can see how painting the model without its head on makes painting those belt straps much, much easier, because normally its ears would be in the way. So without having the arms on it makes access to the chest plate much much easier. Now I'm going to take some scrag brown and on a piece of sponge I'm going to use this to sponge on some rusty areas on my metal. You want to be very careful here that you don't get it onto the black shirt that you've already painted. As long as you use a really light touch and you've dabbed off the vast majority of your scrag brown onto a piece of tissue, you shouldn't have any problems whatsoever. I'm also going to go through and I'm going to use this to sponge a few little rusty spots onto the slugger. Not too many, just to give it a little bit of a warm look. And I'm also going to sponge this all over my chopper. Next I'm going to dry brush some Necron compound all to all of the rusty metal areas. Note I am not going to be dry brushing this onto the slugger. I'm going to use some VMA Chrome and I'm just going to use this to do an edge highlight and also paint all of these shiny metal areas, like all the bolt buckles for example. I 
I'm also using this on any areas of metal that I couldn't actually reach with my sponge to paint a rusty metal effect. So the uh, toe caps of the boots there and a little bit of armor plating on the shin. I'm just doing all of that with chrome. I'm also going to go around some of the rusty areas that I created on the slugger and just highlight those a little bit with the chrome, not too much. I'm also going to paint those spikes on the backs of his gloves as well. Now on the chopper blade, I'm going to create a nice sharp edge highlight down the front of the blade. I'm also going to create little lines to make it look like it's been sharpened with a uh, handheld tool. Now I'm going to edge highlight all of the belts with some Bane Blade Brown. I'm also going to paint in any areas that have got stitching. I'm going to use Bane Blade Brown for that as well. Again, I'm mostly just using the edge of the brush and letting the shape of the model actually dictate where the paint goes. This is much faster and cleaner than using the tip. But if you do have any areas where you can't uh, avoid using the tip or if you make a mistake, don't worry, you can just go back in with some Rhinox hide and then just clean it up afterwards. use some pallid witch flesh and I'm going to create some texture on those leather areas and just creating little nicks and scratches all across all of the leather and again you could skip this stage if you wanted to get them on the tabletop faster now we're going to be painting all the yellow areas because this is a bad moon's orc after all I'm going to be using Avalon sunset thinned down to paint the base color for all of my yellow so I've chosen part of the slugger to paint this on, and I'm also going to do a shoulder pad. Uh, the shoulder pad isn't glued onto the model, I'm just painting that on the sprue separately. So it takes about two to three thin coats to cover decently with Avalon Sunset over the black colours. It does cover really, really nicely. And I'm going to use some Flash Gits Yellow, and this is thinned down so it's at a glaze consistency, and it's already a quite translucent paint. And I'm just going to glaze this over my Avalon Sunset into the areas where I want the highlights to be. So in the case of this slugger, because he's pointing it in the air, I'm actually going to focus my highlights towards the bottom of the yellow area there. This will take a few coats, but it's generally no more than a couple of minutes per model for all of the yellow areas to get this done. And it's worth paying attention to the yellow areas because it's an area that's going to draw the eye because it's such a bright colour. Now I'm going to use Dawn Yellow, which is an edge paint, and you don't want to thin this down too much. I'm just going to use this to do the edge highlights on all of my yellow areas. I'm also going to paint the rivets, if there are any present, with this at the same time. You can also use it to create some little scratches along the yellow areas as well if you want to add more character. Now I'm going to use some Screamer Pink, and this is thinned down to a glaze consistency. You can see it's very translucent there. And I'm going to glaze this into the shadow areas on my yellow. This works well because Screamer Pink is kind of opposite yellow on the colour wheel. It's a little bit more towards the red spectrum than purple, which is actually opposite it. And this will tint the colours to a quite a nice, highly saturated orange colour. 
and uh, I use this on all of my yellows for my orcs. I think it makes them look really vibrant and pop really nicely. If you make any mistakes with the screen pink, you can just go back and flash gets yellow and just tidy it up and feather that transition. Going back in with my dawn yellow, fixing those rivets that I painted over. Now we have assembled our model and we're now finishing it off. You can see here that he's all glued together. Uh, make sure to clean any contact surfaces when you're gluing your model together, if you've painted over them. And I'm just using some non-oil and I'm just using this to hit up some areas such as the boots, the metal areas, and some of the seams on the shirt and the belts, just to make sure they've got all of their shade. I save this all till the end because I'm going to be using the same colour on all of them. Try not to get it on any of the skin. Do you want to shade all of the black areas? And anywhere else that you think needs a little bit more contrast. Just keep it off the skin and the yellow and you should be fine. There we go, that's our Bad Moon's Orc Boy. If you liked this video, please click like, share and uh, comment below with what you thought. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please leave a comment. On the screen now you can see my patrons who supported this video. And without them, I wouldn't be able to keep making more tutorials. So uh, that's it. I hope you're enjoying October. I certainly am. You can subscribe to the channel in the top left there. Patreon down on the bottom left. There's another video you can watch over in the top right. And also my social medias. Uh, please check those out. You can at me about stuff. Show me your orcs. Bye.